Hey, my name is Shanshan. I sell art on shanshan.co. Today we're going to review I Am Detour. So this is a YouTube channel. I think he's more graffiti muralist. His channel, he starts kind of with this generic banner at the top. He has links to, I think a, a mural might be a little bit better, so that might be a little cooler. He has Facebook, LinkedIn, kind of his social media links at the top. That's not bad. He could also do a website link there. He has an official who he is at the top, which is, I think, pretty strong. And then his first uh, thing is how to paint mural street art 101, which is really cool. Advice for creatives, uploads, time lapse, art sessions, product review, and street art walkthrough. So I think it's a pretty strong setup as far as what you would have. Really good thumbnails, I think. A little bit different every thumbnail, so he is a little bit styly, you know, different on the styles, but let's check out some of these videos. All right, so the first video is what is inside a spray paint can. I know it's nothing about painting too much, but I was kind of curious myself what is inside a spray paint can, right? So let's see what it says here. What's going on, everybody? Uh, today, what we're going to do is open up a can of spray paint right here. Why, you ask? Well, I've been going uh, bigger a lot lately, uh, doing murals and things like that, so I use a lot of spray cans, or spray paint from different brands now, and I want to actually know how the spray paint works. So for me... So it starts off strong, he has a little bit of music in the background to kind of make it more jazzier feel. He's straight, straight on shot, which is a good introduction. He has some of his background from his studio in the background, which is really cool because you see some of his artwork in the background, so that's really strong. You're a person, so I want to visualize the inside. Let's just get to the opening here. It's a great we'll detail shot. Up, and now we're gonna take a look inside. So, let's see. Already, you can see that there's like a buildup of paint at the bottom um, because we open it up at the bottom. And then for the Liquid Tex uh, brand, there's two marbles inside. So this prop, so this, these marbles probably are used to knock that paint that coagulates and you know, forms together. That's always interesting because I always wonder what the hell is that sound inside of a spray paint can? It's really thick, really hard, so it uh, feeds from the bottom of the spray paint can, so it goes up. So that's why uh, when you turn the paint, the, the spray paint can upside down and spray, all you're releasing is just the compressed air and the leftover paint in the actual nozzle. So, if you want to release, uh, relieve some of the pressure in your spray paint can and do some detail work, that's why um, you have to hold it upside down and just keep spraying. So, hold upside down sprays because nothing will be feeding into the tube because the paint is at the bottom. That's kind of interesting to work upside down like that. Really say about this other than definitely making sure you can visualize your spray paint can inside when you're using it. So I think that's a pretty good interesting, you know, what's inside of actually how you make spray paint cans and how they're going to be used. So let's skip to the next video here. I think it's kind of interesting um, detailed look of what's in a spray paint can. I never knew. I know they make all that weird sound and racket. So you're always like, what the hell is that, right? The next video is how to paint a mural tutorial an inside look at my process. Okay, What's going again. on internet today? I really wanna take you behind the scenes of my latest mural. So again, he's right looking straight at the camera. I got a great intro. He's got his spray paint can collection in the background. So you can see how he's working there. He has a nice painting there. So you see the work in progress, which is really strong. Now let's get to the mural part. Is it the location? 
because I get a lot of information in terms of like where I have to drop off stuff, how do I load in all my supplies, uh, what do I need to mask on. Okay, so you got some of the technicalities. Bring it back to my studio and then on my iPad, I sort of do some mock-up stuff. So this is what I did here. A lot of mocking up and then gathering supplies on what I need. The one thing I noticed was that the wall was flat. So I'm able to use not only brushwork, but a lot of spray uh, medium as well. And then after that, once I get started, it's all about prepping the space because you want to make sure you keep it as clean as possible. Prep, 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 prep. Yeah, because you're inside, you're doing a professional job. So most of the beginnings of rollers and then leftover paint that I have and I went out and got some other special paint that I sort of needed or the colors that I really, really wanted. And really it's just like tackling that wall, um, just throwing down colors. So that's a really cool start. Let's skip ahead a little bit here. But uh, really just like trying to sort of game plan as I'm sort of going along. And sometimes I don't know how it's gonna come out or look like, but that's like one of the, the fun parts is not being able to sort of really see it until I put it down. It's a very nice kind of abstract he's building up there. Scroll ahead a little bit. Just take various amounts of time based on the sort of size of the wall but um, this one only took a day to sort of uh, do most of it and this is sort of like the second day I came back and started to add these white lines I wanted to have something that sort of tied everything together but was still abstract and you know this white little streak across sort of adds something a little bit different to it and it's, it's a little bit bolder I like the fact that he has kind of a lot of different styles I paint myself a lot of different styles let's skip ahead a little bit Think back to what it was. That that's when the mural really, really pops. And that's why I like doing murals like this. So hopefully you guys get to see it as you visit this shop in Denver, Colorado, be a good person. Uh, so yeah, so hopefully that helped out. So that's kind of cool. He did a real simple abstract painting there. You out in determining some of the tools or the prep work that you need to do in your own mural project. So I think it's really cool video because you kind of learn how to do a mural from the ground up and kind of how you prep everything and all that. I just did a. My first mural commission, I had no idea what I was doing. I kind of knew how to scale it up as a painting, but it was interesting to work that way. Um, you also might want to make sure you got a really solid contract. A lot of artists get really bitten in the butt by a bad contract or no contract, and then they, they're trouble collecting money or they have endless changes and get screwed on that. So definitely have a contract as well. That's another important part. Let's go to the next video. This one is kind of funny. It's the top five things you can't say to an artist, things artists hate. <laughs> I know this has nothing for my art collectors, but I thought this was a funny video, so let's see what this guy has to say. To an artist. Artists are being creative. We have to have this creative energy around us. And when we get questions out of nowhere that sort of don't make sense, sometimes it just throws us for a loop. So what are the five things that you cannot say to an artist? We're gonna get started with that. So I like, again, he's doing nice headshot straight on, start off, got a little bit of music in the background. He has a studio in the background. So a really great intro, I think. Day and number one is, hey, I love your work. I mean, I love it and I want to see if you can do a commission for me and I want to know if you can paint my grandma. Yeah, this is a picture I carry around from 1921. As you can see, you know, it's a small sort of uh, a portrait of her. I just want you to blow it up as big as possible. Can you do that? <laughs> Yeah, commission work can be a nightmare for that. Let's go to the next point here. Cheap artwork. Do you make cheap artwork that I can buy? Cheap? You think my work is cheap? Do you, did you just ask me, do I make cheap work? Do I look like the Dollar Tree to you right now? Yeah, the, a lot of times you'll get like a lowball offer. Uh, the last art show I did, some guy offered, um, I think it was like 30%, 35% of my normal price. And I would tell him no, but he was like, he had a leg missing, he was retired. So I was like, all right, I'll cut him a deal. But normally I just say no and say like, play full price, nothing, no no discounts, exceptions. But if you have someone come up, he's missing a leg, he's retired, it's like, you know, it's like, all right, <laughs> you gotta cut a deal, a guy like that a deal. But normally I wouldn't do it ever that. Let's skip ahead. Yeah, I just see like you're using blue, like you're using blue here. And it just reminds me of Basquiat. Do you know who Basquiat is? Like, I, 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 ah, uh, oh. Uh. <laughs> I'll skip ahead a little bit. <laughs> the 
Okay, just hold on, just hold on. Okay, 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 okay. I mean, I have, I have. Okay, okay. What's what's today's date? Okay, I took it back and like. I mean, you can. Oh, this happens all the time. People want to show you their artwork or something, and then they're like, "Let me pull it up," and they can't find it on their phone. You're like, create a folder for art. You put all the photos in there. You're done. No one's ever organized online. It's so terrible. All these people that have kind of like amateur art or they want to show their cousin's art or their friend's art or their grandson's art or something. You're like, and you're like just time wasters, right? Because they're not going to buy anything and they just kind of want to talk to you at an art show. And you're like, dude, I got to find real clients. I can't waste my time with this. You can email me. Uh, you can email me anytime. Like, so, okay, I got to go all the way down. Okay. Those items. Um, but I still have to ask, you know, are you... The artist? Oh. <laughs> yeah, that happens all the every art show. They'd be like, "Are you the artist? Did you create all this work?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's why I'm standing here by myself." <laughs> like all these art shows, you have to be the artist on site. So it's so hilarious they always ask this question, but you know you have to answer it. So it's, it's just that's a funny one. Next time you see an artist, make sure you avoid some of those questions at all costs. So hopefully you liked the video. So I think that was a great <laughs> video. I kind of cut it really short. It's, you know, I would just see the whole thing. I think it's pretty humorous. But yeah, I think this guy's got a lot of really great uh, tips on how to do mural art, painting. And he's a smaller channel, but I think he has a lot to offer. Uh, let's go check out his website, I Am Detour. Unfortunately, someone else has detour.com, so that's the worst thing that possible can happen is someone claims your name, so you have to say I am Detour versus Detour. So he might have gone with Detour Art, I don't know, but it, at least it matches his YouTube channel. So he has a picture of him, nothing really much. I, you might wanna add murals there, he has a gallery. Let's check out the murals. Okay, some really big murals, so that's pretty impressive. Um, that's a really strong selling point for buying the works. Uh, he's got some other stuff. Let's see between the hues, some really nice colors, really vivid colors, very colorful. And some installation work, which I never understand what installation work's about, but it's pretty cool. I have some really cool. He has Malala. I've done a Malala too, so I think his Malala looks a little better. But <laughs> he has some really nice stuff. Bruce Lee, uh, Frida Kahlo, obviously Michael Jordan. So these are really nice projects you can do. I think he has a video. Let's see if that just goes to his YouTube channel or actually has embedded videos. Just goes straight to the video site. So I would not have that where you just go straight to the YouTube channel. I would actually embed the videos. Um, you can do YouTube embed in each your website. That way it doesn't leave the channel. I don't think that's a smart thing to do um, because then they can go to your video channel and then they don't know how to get back to the website and then you've lost them as a customer. So he has some work. Uh, these are prints that are pretty reasonably priced, not expensive at all. I guess he's doing his... See, does he have painting up here too? So he has a lot of different websites. A lot of really cool black artists and stuff like Basquiat, Tupac. He has a CV which... Okay, so he went to an MBA, so he has his classical... Um, a lot of fine artists will do this that are, you know, really deep into the educational world. I've done a little bit, so I know how to set up this way, but I don't know. No one looks at the CV except for galleries, I think. But I mean, it is helpful if you're getting into gallery shows. Um, it's not a bad way to go. Uh, he has all these different web clippings. Hopefully these are, if you ever get web clippings, what you want to do is screenshot it and make it a PDF on your own website, and then you can link it back to the original. But a lot of those older news articles will be lost over time, so you wanna just definitely save them off. I don't know if that's the case with his. I'm not gonna go into every single one. He has an about page, so just really simple, clean cut, quick. His Instagram, I don't know if you necessarily have to have a whole thing. So this goes to his Instagram. I wouldn't encourage this where you go straight off the website because if you're looking to buy, you're just getting lost. Same thing here, he has a nice book. That's fine, I would include that within the shop. I'm not sure why it's distinct. I would put this as kind of an embedded link if possible on your website, because this is fine if you want to sell this. It's a challenge, because you don't want to get 
loss, but at the same time, a sale is a sale. So it's not bad to sell your book. It's obviously highly encouraged to do a book. I have little mini art books myself with blurbs. That's a good way to do, if you're not up to the level where you're doing like professional publishing, you can self-publish with these really small books. I would encourage that. It's really cool for some people collection. So I think it's a pretty solid website. I just wouldn't have those external links to Instagram and I would just embed all that and just have your own, you know, homepage and you don't have to show Instagram because you go to Instagram, you get lost, you might not go back to the website. And then you a lot of you may have lost a potential customer there. The videos as well, I would embed them on the website. I think it's a pretty good website overall. I'd encourage you guys to check them out. I think it's a good thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe, you could subscribe below. And I'll see you on the next Artist React video.